morning, everyone. It's welcome to St. Bartholomew's Zoom service once again. We are so delighted to have you with us, those of you who are here with us regularly, regularly and those who are here for the first time. We hope you will be able to settle in and worship God together and know that God loves and cares for all of us as we go through these times. So a few announcements for today. Um, the first thing on, on the announcement page says that our youth group will do their Zoom meeting next week. So if you've got forgotten that and plan to be present, please kind of check it out and put it on your calendar. A few things from the outreach committee. Once a month, they're delivering, they're offering food a lot, but once a month, I think they're gonna have another, every month, a, a new food drive. So as you go shopping, remember that there'll be an opportunity once again to bring into this great place a food to be distributed to our neighborhood and our neighbors. And we're ready to start getting ready for the flea market, which is, of course, the biggest event outside of worship I think we have here at St. Bartholomew's every year. Every dime that's made goes back into our community. So read all the information about it, see how you can respond, how you can join in and, and come and work when you can. It'll be a safe environment. Also, come consider coming on Sunday morning. We have some people out there this morning weeding and stopping for worship. Always know that you can come and join and they're glad to have you because this property takes a lot of work. Okay, is there anything I've forgotten? I don't think so, except to remind you that after the peace, we will be offer having an opportunity for you to have an agape meal at home while we have, um, well, after we celebrate Eucharist. And so make sure you have some bread of some sort and a libation of some fitting libation that, that you can have to use at home. So good morning, and let us begin with him on page nine of your bulletin, Awake My Soul and With the Sun. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll begin again. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now on this Independence Day weekend, Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn. Grant, we beseech you, that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain these liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you double. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that, that I that do it, but since that dwell within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. 
So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the crowd, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one known knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord.
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I grew up at the Church of the Messiah in Northeast Baltimore on Harford Road. Actually, the inside of the Church of the Messiah looks a lot like St. Bartholomew's. And in particular, we too had a window over the altar, which was and is the centerpiece and has Jesus right in the middle. But the Jesus figures on, at the Church of the Messiah and St. Bartholomew's are different. Messiah's Jesus, at least when I was growing up, looked like the earthly Jesus rather than the risen Christ. And instead of arms raised like they are in our window, the arms on the Jesus and Messiah's windows were outstretched like this. He always looked to me like he was on the road, inviting me to come and join him, ready to take me in, ready to embrace me. I grew up with that window. I loved that window. I memorized that window. And it gave me great comfort always, wherever I was. But there's a second part to that story. In conjunction with the window, there was a saying of Jesus from Scripture that was repeated every time we celebrated Holy Communion, and some of you out there will probably remember that. The saying fit the theme of Jesus in that window and also brought me great comfort, and I memorized it too. And you just heard it at the end of today's Gospel reading. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy, laden, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Only in those days back then when I was growing up, the priest always said this, Come to me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Same verse, older translation. The altar woman window at Messiah, showing Jesus with open arms, and that phrase from today's gospel became central to my developing faith. Jesus wanting me, Jesus wanting you, Jesus inviting me, Jesus inviting you, ready to take us into his arms, help us live better. And that good news will always be a part of me, and I hope it's found its way into you too. But as I grew in my understanding of Scripture and Jesus, and as I slowly began to mature in my faith, I was challenged to broaden my understanding of Jesus. As I said a couple of weeks ago in the sermon, I began to see Jesus as a mover and shaker that he really was, and not just as a comforter, a healer, a caregiver. I came to realize that Jesus came to change the world, believe it or not, and not just each of us. Jesus came to usher in God's kingdom on earth, and not just in the sweet by and by. And that would require him and us to shake things up, turn things around, make them fit God's vision of the kingdom. In other words, when I was younger, I was caught, and it's a good thing, by Jesus' invitation to come and be refreshed. But that fuller invitation to come and be yoked to him took longer to sink in. Coming to him felt freeing. Being yoked to him felt 
constrictive. But is it constricting? Jesus says, no. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what was Jesus talking about when he gave this great invitation to come and be yoked to him? What was the context for these invitations in the gospel? Well, first, the context. We heard at the beginning of today's reading that Jesus was addressing a crowd. Now, that shouldn't surprise us. He always seemed to be gathering a crowd wherever he went. As he traveled through the countryside or into small towns, all kinds of people went out to him. Sometimes thousands remember the feeding of the 5,000. Many were recipients of Jesus' good works. And, mo and yet, most of them did not get who Jesus really was and what he was really about. They were drawn by the comfort part of his invitation, but not so impressed with the mover-shaker part. In other words, they weren't ready to accept him as the Christ. They accepted him as a good teacher and a wonderful healer, but not the Christ. Today, we hear Jesus lamenting this situation and in some rather strong words. But what I love is that Jesus does not get stuck in his lament. He turns to God and acknowledges that God is in charge of his work and his mission. He thanks God for those who have accepted him and who have joined him. He gives thanks that his identity and purpose have been revealed to some. He calls them infants. We heard little children last week. That is, in this case, those who have not let tradition and narrow expectations get in their way. Those who are open to God doing a new thing. And then, what's really exciting is that giving thanks seems to give Jesus new determination and a new, new meaning. He turns back to the crowd and he invites them to come and be with him, to come and be yoked to him, to be part of God's mission and ministry. And that's the invitation he continues to give us every single day. He doesn't give up on us. Now, being yoked is rather strange language for us city and suburban people. But it is not strange for agricultural people. In fact, there are many people around the world who still use yoked oxen to pull their plows. A yoke, as I sure you know, is a wooden cross piece that fits over the shoulders of two animals and keeps them together, keeps them working together. Wearing the yoke makes them a team and it makes their work easier. Oh, it's still work and it's still tiring and it still takes energy, but it is not oppressive. So Jesus is inviting the crowd and us to work in tandem with him in advancing God's reign. Jesus doesn't expect us to remake the world on our own or to re even remake ourselves on our own. This is a joint enterprise and it's not all our responsibility. And that is good news to me. But there's still another aspect of being yoked. The image of a yoke is used many times in Hebrew scripture. Just look it up on Bible Gateway or something. You, you'll be amazed. In many instances, most, 
being under someone's yoke refers to being oppressed by bad kings or enemies who lay hard burdens on the people that they conquer and subdue. And that included the Jews. But the Jews' own religious law laid heavy burdens on them too. If you wanted to be right with God, you had to keep the law. And by law, I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about 613 commandments that were developed to interpret the Ten Commandments. Trying to stay right with God by keeping all those laws was difficult, even for the religious leaders, whose, that's whose main job it was. But it was impossible for common folk. Along with the state taxes by the oppressors and the temple taxes, the people were indeed under heavy burdens. So Jesus looks at the crowd and invites them to come to him, not to give up on the law, but to open its interpretation, to stop the law from being something that constricts and causes heavy burdens and allow it to be something that helps them, allow it to be something that leads them to rejoicing, to something that not only has God's love and justice at its center, but God's forgiveness and mercy. As you know, the world is full of oppressed people. And maybe you're even feeling oppressed today. There seems to be so many things that get in the way of our joy and our peace and our comfort. In such times, how can Jesus help us carry our burdens? How does being yoked to him change things? For me, it means doing whatever I can in whatever small ways I can. Remember Flo, just do something to keep God's kingdom advancing. It means trying to focus like Jesus on what God is doing in this world and not so much on who or what keeps getting in the way. It means giving thanks to God every time someone reaches out to another with compassion. Every time someone makes an inroad for God's justice and mercy. It remembers, means remembering God is ultimately in charge. And I don't have to fight every battle because I know that you and you and you and you are new are all out there too, working for God's kingdom in whatever areas you are. And always knowing that as Christ reaches out to me in love and comfort, he is also reaching out to you. I am, I've always been so grateful for growing up with that image of Jesus with outstretched arms written on my soul, inviting me to be with him and get yoked to him. But you know what? I'm even more grateful for having the image of Jesus with outstretched arms on the cross, willing to die not only for me, but for the world. That image and the image above the altar, our altar, of Christ rising from the tomb are the ones that give me ultimate hope and trust. So Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, 
and my burden is light. Amen. And now I invite you to confess our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. God has called us to be ministers for all people, offering to God the world's concerns. Let us then pray for the whole people of God in, G in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, Blessed are you, our sovereign God, for you do not abandon what you have created, but continue to make your grace known among us. We thank you for those who have chosen to speak your re reconciling word in this age, and we pray for the grace to receive it. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, our caring God, for you hear the cries of the poor. You see the tears in the eyes of those who mourn. You feel the pain of those in anguish. And you come to the side of those who are lonely. Call your church to compassion and service. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, our God of peace, for you have bid us to make warfare cease and to place our trust in you who bore us up on eagles' wings. Raise up among us peacemakers and confound those who trust in chariots and horses. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Blessed are you, our God of justice, for you desire that be that all be one. Erase the prejudice and class divisions among us, Lord, that together we might share in your vision of harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, our God of strength, 
for you do not desire harm, but you favor our health. Give to those in need of healing necessary measures of health, patience, and hope, remembering Lucy Marshall, Doris Hoy, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, David Schneider, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Yvetta Dupree, Tony Creek, Mike Knutskin, Lib Shipley, Irene Hardy, Lillian Thomas, Teresa Sexton, Celia Vismail, Patrick Mellon, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Tiger Watts, Peter Griffin, John Davis, Young Sam, Michelle Haney Madison, Kate Henshaw, Mary Warfield, Susan Lundeen, Yogesh Patel, Amanda Harris and Marilyn and Ben Smith, Earl Rooley, Ronnie Clark, Sean Brady, A. Odell House, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, Hope Harbor partner families, those affected by the coronavirus, and any others we name at this time. Ron Bluen, John Bluen, Stephen, Jenny. Benedict, Sisters of Baltimore. Carol. Residents of Isaiah House. Mrs. Johnson. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our God of abundance. We give thanks for 20 anniversary. Kimberly Ann, Kathy John McPhillips, for the 21st birthday of Brendan Sullivan McPhillips, the second wedding anniversary of young Brendan and Brian Phillips, the birthdays of Yvetta Dupree, the 28th birthday of Allison Doyle, the birthday on Monday of Eve Marie Stark, granddaughter of Mary and Bob Buchanan. <laughs> and the others we came at time, like all the old men that have mentored me throughout the years. celebrating this Millicent McLeod, Abigail, West Aaron, Abigail, 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 Blessed are you, our God of eternity. We pray bring Margaret Fox, Lavon Annette Clark, James Pulliam, Roxanne Pulliam, Alma Cooper, and any others we name at this time. James, James McCarthy Pulliam. Yeah. George, very this week. Joanne. May us with you in peace, Lord and mercy. Into your hand.
we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our let us confess our sins against God and our God of all mercy. We confess we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in either in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Peace. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Hi, Mom. Love you. Peace Hi. 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 Michael was taking care of the Zoom. I just want to say before I invite you to um, communion and agape meal, to say thanks to, today we're really, except for me, we're, you either have to be a mountain or a Davis to be here. Davis brothers and the whole, I mean Davis brothers, mountain brothers and the whole Davis family. So we really give you thanks as always for helping us to make Sunday morning go smoothly and, and help us all to be together because that's really what it's about. Now, I realize you can't take communion ho at home. We know that and that's why we have suggested all these weeks that you join us in an agape sharing, which means a love feast. It's old in our church. It was, did, we didn't begin it. All Jewish families sat down together and said thanks over bread and wine during their meals. And so, after we do this, uh, the celebration of Eucharist here at the altar, I'll come and invite you to pick up your bread and then your wine and, and, or your, whatever your libation is. And, and we'll say thanks over it. And then you can share that at home and know that you are part of the community and that all of us together are sharing bread and drink in God's name. Now we'll continue with prayer C. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own we have given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, from the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, yes, you we called muted. us to unmuted. Through prophets Oops. and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. So remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, God of Isaac and Rebekah, of Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace, for comfort only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. And now, for those of you at home, if you would pick up your bread or your cracker or whatever it is and say with me, Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may also hunger for the food of everlasting life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now if you would pick up your libation and say with me, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink, which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, if you will join me in the post-communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. <coughs> I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at... <coughs> I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you this day and evermore. Amen.
as we go forth into the world, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. 